as we pivot into the U.S. and looking at demand, we always like to put everything together, look at where some of the flows are. You can see that the uh, the recent bounce from 14.45 million barrels a day to about 15.38 brings us right in line with where we were at in 2018. But remember, those are averages. So we, you know, the average when we're looking at it for 2023, it's still sub 15 million barrels a day. But you're going to start to see that creep higher. And again, this is normal for this time of year as we continue to see this creeping f forward just because we do have some of this additional demand. We do see some of these additional flows. And again, that's where we continue to see things trending below where they were. You know, last year, you can see that uh, this spike is actually very close to what we had in 2021. And then in 2021, we went sideways for the most part. And then we'll see this continue to, to again, slow down. At, but we, we will go higher. That is what's just normal at this point in time. Like, that's what we've been saying. We do get an increase. We had Juneteenth. We have July 4th coming up. You know, that's going to, but typically we get a little bit of a lull here. And then you'll have that July 4th, nice little spike. We do see that spike and then a little bit of a fade. And the, the issue is we're not going to have the support from the distillate side like we did last year. You know, that was really what helped bridge us. Instead, we're going to see both of them just underwhelming, which is going to keep us closer to that 15 million barrel a day average and below what has been historically the case from, you know, if you look at 17 through 19. So now when we get a bit more specific, you know, you look at distillate, there was a small build of 430,000 barrels. Uh, that's still 18.9 million below the five year, uh, a bit 4.4 million ab above last year. So again, we're still trending higher than last year, but rate of change wise, we leveled off a bit. You know, we sh we do see this accelerating a touch as we have diesel demand and gas oil demand being a bit low, and obviously we have the ramp up coming with some of the um, uh, refiners. You know, obviously just again very seasonally normal, not anything crazy from a refining perspective. But as the demand remains a bit diminished, that will put more uh, product in storage. And then remember, we've been talking about a, a pressure for our exports, given the amount of Russian product in the system, the amount of product coming from the Middle East, which is going to keep things a bit elevated in general. Imports um, had a small increase of 7,000 barrels uh, a day, still right around the five-year average, You know, not, uh, not too crazy one way or the other. So again, still something stable. Now, one of the things that we were saying on the distillate crack was that you were gonna get a nice spike and then it was gonna fade back to that average. And we, we had that here. You had that nice little spike and now you've had a bit of a pullback. And we do see it trending to back to about 25. But again, it's it's going to take time because here, you know, there's refiners are going to make money. So they're going to increase operations, which is not only just normal, but also something that, you know, trying to capture this. Obviously, we're not going to be at levels that we were at in 2022. But we do see that trending back down to 20. But even at 20, you're still going to see refiners active. The question is going to come down to what do the differentials look like and what does shipping look like? Shipping prices have creeped up. Differentials have tightened to touch. And that's going to put a little bit of pressure. But at 25, you know, that's still something that's going to work. Now, when we look at pad one fuel inventories, just above 2022 levels, still very low. Again, the issues with Colonial Pipeline are real. You know, you had some people that were selling space just because you had some unplanned downtimes, which, uh, which again, some companies were just selling space to fill it. And the Jones Act, again, there's just no reason to use the Jones Act. So you're still going to have the East Coast in a, in a tough spot as we, and you know, we don't really see this <laughs> changing too much going into next year, uh, into, into, uh, into winter. So a tough winter and, and the East coast is going to struggle. And here's pad three, again, elevated, you know, as those exports slow, we're going to see some of this increase. And this is what we've been talking about as the pressure point for the distillate crack is going to be pad three, because you have refiners ramping up, you have exports slowing, yeah, and, and realistically, this is where you're going to see that build. So we do see this pushing back to the highs and likely getting something closer to 2021 levels. Now, we did get an, uh, an increase in demand, uh, slightly above the five-year average. But as we've been saying, on average, it's going to be just below that five-year 
in the lower part of the cloud. We don't see new seasonally adjusted lows. It's just, it's gonna be below the five year and, and a bit underwhelming. And here's just some of that data, again, showing some of those pressure points when you look at the uh, at the data. Now, one of the other things that, you know, just looking at the FedEx, you know, FedEx is gonna shut 29 more aircraft as demand shrinks. And again, that, that filters down where you have that demand shrinking, not only just on the, on the aircraft side, also on, on the uh, ground front. And now somebody asked a great question on Twitter. They're like, well, isn't this just normal if you think about the spike that happened from, from COVID? Which is a great question because the, if this was 2022, the answer would have been yes. Because 2022, if you remember, they took down some of their, uh, some of their flights. They took, they took down some of their routes. And people kind of wrote that off to, to COVID because it's like you had this big spike in 2020, 2021. Now you're starting to see things normalize. This one is a bit more cyclical. And, and that's where you do get that, sh that shift. And again, if anybody ever has any questions, please let us know. Like, you know, we're, we're not a group of people that won't be respectful because well, let's be fair. That's an honest question. It's like, well, how do you know the difference between, you know, cyclical and COVID, you know, which is a hundred percent a fair assessment. That's why we've been tracking this. And, it, and it's just, you can say, look, that 2022, hundred percent correct. That was COVID. This is something that is a bit cyclical, especially again, when you layer in with where we are right now, you layer it in with where we are on the shipping side, you layer that in with Amazon commentary and obviously where some of these diesel storages are. And you that's why we feel comfortable in saying that that is more of a cyclical and less of a COVID component. Now, when we start looking at U.S. rail traffic, you know, uh, on the year to date side, total car loads are up 1.2 percent. Grains are getting hit hard uh, down 23.6. You know, the, the issue right now is going to remain on the uh, uh, on the shipping side because we're just not getting the same demand. But it's because of the drought. <clears throat> The drought continues to be an issue. That's hitting things on, on a bigger scale. Chems continues to slow. That's not something that we see changing as demand continues to wane. Cracks continue to struggle. And then when we start looking at, at vehicles, metal, uh, you know, ores, that's going to be elevated. And then petroleum, petroleum products is a bit higher. That's something that's going to be an interesting one to watch because, you know, how much is going to move by rail to try to clear some of the glut in pad three versus pad one. And then intermodal had a bit of a bounce versus the last few weeks, but intermodal is still down 6.5%. You know, that's something that, again, speaking back to what is COVID and what is cyclical, you know, COVID, we still had some of that coming through. So when you look at it in comparison to 22, you should see some of this, we're seeing some of this drop. Some of it is some of that, uh, that excess from COVID because typically rail traffic will fare better than trucking, but that's why we see a continuous slowdown because you deal, you still have some of that COVID benefit coming out. And then you again, have some of that cyclical, uh, uh, is those cyclical issues. You know, when you look at births uh, coming into the U.S., uh, again, you're still the change from previous week, the change from previous year. Previous year, you, you had some uh, slowdowns. If you remember the strikes, you know, some of those issues, which pack some of those uh, cargoes up. So some of that is is a bit wonky when you look at the data. But realistically, things started to normalize as we got into July. So when you look at it against previous years, still a bit lower. And then if you look at total vessels within 40 miles, average time waiting birth, you know, if you looked at 20, even at 2022, those numbers were very elevated. And you see it's still at zero because things are moving quickly and you don't have the same demand levels and backlog. Now, when we look at, uh, at you know, temperatures, obviously things are uh, white hot when you look at the south and that creeps all the way up to the north. Uh, things in the northeast are, are fairly mild, you know, either near normal, slightly below normal, you know, slightly above in the top. But again, nothing that's going to increase natural gas demand uh, for cooling or electricity in the Northeast. You're going to have a lot of that really in the Southeast, in the, mid, in the uh, Midwest and in the South. And that's going to keep things. But again, when you're balancing that between supply of natural gas demand, you know, we're still remaining fairly range bound and things do start to, do start to cool off a bit with some of the rainstorms coming through. Gasoline had a build of 480,000 barrels. Uh, it's still 17 million below the five year, but 2.4 million above the year uh, last year. 
builds in pad one, pad two, draws in pad three. Uh, when you look at blending components, blending components had a build of 2.16 million. That's just 12 million below the five year, but 4 million above last year. And now, if you remember the previous week, you had gasoline builds pretty high, blending components a bit lower. Now you have the switch. So again, you're just seeing this bounce, this back and forth in terms of them trying to manage blending components, given the amount, the, the lack of, um, of pet chem demand and some of that back and forth. Now, when we look at imports, now imports were down 127,000 barrels a day but there's still 117,000 above the five year. Pad one had a small decline. It's still 226,000 above the five year. And this is what we've been talking about is that we're not gonna get this massive surge and then a drop off. We're gonna stay elevated. You know, It's gonna be over 750 and 800,000 barrels a day coming into pad one because the price differentials support it. You know, you have a significant amount of gasoline in Europe. You have it in uh, big, bigger builds again in, uh, in Fujara. You know, that's going to continue to shift and push these barrels into the Gulf of Mexico. I'm sorry, into the East Coast, the Atlantic Basin, and Pad 1 is going to absorb it because we are still 5.5 million below the five-year average and Pad 1 gasoline. And there's more than enough uh, areas because our gasoline spreads are still supportive of it. Our gasoline prices are still supportive of it. So that's why we continue to see those imports, which is why we see builds being a little bit higher and why we're going to trend up and back towards those 2019 levels over the next few weeks. Blending components, that that decent pivot higher, you can see again trending up. We think that the rate of change is going to outpace last year, and that's because Olin announced uh, more more uh, cuts and runs on their pet chem side. You know, the margins aren't there. Again, pushing more of this back into the blending pool, and we're going to continue to see some of those counter seasonal increases. On the demand front, you know, um, Asia Pacific picked up slightly. Uh, it's still going to be a bit on the down, on the lower end. Europe, as you can see, uh, had a nice little uh, reprieve, which is similar to the spike that we had last year, just at a higher level. Now, it'll be interesting to see, does it fall back down? Does it stay elevated? You know, our expectation in Europe is that it averages normal kind of 2019 levels, uh, not too much up or down, but again, averaging, like it could fall below, could stay above, but again, kind of moving closer, where North America is going to go sideways from here. If you look in last year, you had a continuous trend down. We don't really see that. We see a, a bit more of a stabilization kind of going sideways, but and, and just coming back to what we've been saying, kind of below where we were. Now, according to Gas Buddy data, U.S. gasoline demand rose 1.8% last week, but was 1.4% below the uh, the four-week moving average. And that's why there's still some of that disconnect between what is the EIA showing, what is Gas Buddy showing, and what is TomTom Tom showing. TomTom Tom and Gas Buddy are, are kind of marrying with where we are, where it's like, look, Things are a bit slower than than where they have been on on the average side, but again, it's just it's consistent with what we're seeing in terms of some of the other data points that we're looking in, the consumer data, the economic data. We're going to be a bit lower, but again, not collapsing. It's not like we're fifteen percent below normal. No, we're about one point four percent below the moving average, where we should have been a bit higher given Juneteenth. Instead, we are a little bit lower. But again, we'll, we'll have some of that bounce. You know, it, but it'll be interesting to see how does July look in comparison to the previous um, uh, up July fourth uh, this year compared to last year. Now, when we look at the uh, ga gasoline pricing, again, it's going sideways, which is uh, a bit stable here. We do see diesel prices shifting a bit lower, but again, it's going to start to level off because typically they, they do stay fairly close to each other within reason. But just given you know pricing right now, shipping, where things are, storage, you know, there's really no impetus for gasoline prices to drop, especially ahead of July 4th. So we do see this being fairly stable sideways. Now, when we start looking at the demand cycle uh, on the crude front, uh, on the gasoline front, if you take away that 2020 number, you know, we're right at the 10 year or, you know, without 2020, nine year average. So it's still not, nothing bullish. It's not really bearish. It's just, uh, you know, again, that's just looking at the data sets against expectations, it's bearish because the expectations were this big, you know, aggressive driving season thing. And it's like, look, you have to look at the consumer. 
If, if gasoline was $2.30, sure, there's a very good chance we'd be blasting this to the highs, but it's not. It's at three fifty five. dollars Is it cheaper than it was? Yes. Is that still cheap versus historics? Absolutely not, especially when you layer in all of the other uh, pressures on the consumer, on, on uh, earnings, on credit card rates. So all of those things continue to be a problem, which is why we, we see this, this general uh, slowdown. Now, are, are we going to go higher into July 4th? Absolutely. The question is going to be, is it a big spike and fade? Is it, a, is it a smaller spike, but then we stay elevated, kind of going sideways? I, I think if anything, it's like it's likely a smaller spike, but we stay a little bit stickier than we have been in the past. And again, we continue to see some of those different uh, pieces in general. So propane, propylene, um, you had a build of 1.49 million uh, the, against the five-year average. That's 17.1 million above the five-year. We're still trending well above average. We're the highest we've been uh, since 2015. And it's a lot of that is because production is still very elevated. Uh, you don't have the local demand from refining, but you do have massive export demand. And that's why pricing has a little bit of that floor. We are by no means <laughs> rallying on, on the pricing side, but we do have a decent, you know, a little bit of the support on the on the downside that we haven't had in the past. And a lot of that is driven based on the support from the export market. Uh, jet fuel, uh, you have a, a, a draw of 1.43 million. It's just uh, 800,000 below the five year. You know, again, just kind of they're going to manage that dislip pool versus the jet fuel pool. And you can see that we had a spike that we've had very similarly at this point in time. You typically have that spike, the fade, and then another spike ahead of July 4th. And then we think that after that spike, you're going to level off a little bit lower and you're going to stay within that range of 1.5, 1.6, maybe 1.55, 1.65. But again, just below, kind of below what has been expected in previous years. Um, when you look at the uh, number of passenger flights scheduled for the uh, 12 weeks out is increased 5.3% from the week starting June 13th. Uh, again, you know, very similar to what we should be seeing given the increases 12 weeks out. We do, we, we will see some of that slowdown just as China finishes bringing back their flights and you start to get some of that, uh, that leveling off, especially because Euro, uh, in the European region, you're about eight, 9% below normal. U.S. is going to stay right around where we were in 2019, which is not a strong year. It's obviously way more normal than the others, but you're getting an idea of some of that balancing act in general, which we don't see changing. You know, delays continue to be a problem. You know, again, that's not something that is a surprise for anybody who's tried to fly. And then looking at where we are in 2023 versus 2019, we're almost marrying it perfectly. Uh, so we'll continue to trend up, obviously, for, for the holidays. Then you have that big drop as people are already there for July 4th. And then you get some of that recovery. And then you drop off as we get towards uh, August 15th. You know, give or take a day or two is typically kind of where you see that bigger pivot as people go back to school. And then when you look at uh, at activity, you know, uh, from the food side, you can see that United States is a bit lower. You know, globally, we're about four, three, two to four percent below normal. You know, that's something that we think does continue to trend down uh, just as people. Uh, one of the things that we've seen and we've talked about on the macroeconomic show, people just aren't eating out as much because, again, this is some of that excess that people just don't want to spend on right now, which, again, continues to see some of those adjustments. So that's what we have for you here in the next segment. We're, we're going to go deeper into Chinese demand and global physical movements and how that's going to shape up going uh, throughout the rest of the summer.